everybody, and welcome again to Faith on Friday Extra. This series is all about highlighting people, topics, and businesses that I know you will find inspiring, engaging, and interesting. And today is no exception. I'm your host, Ricky Smith. And let me tell you, again, we are going international, y'all. We are going to Canada today. I'm going to introduce you to somebody. Here's the introduction. Everyone's doing it, doing it, but no one talks about it. That's right. We are talking sex today, so get the kids out of the room. I want to introduce you to founder and creator, April Tarot. April, how are you? I am so good. How are you? I'm doing well, thank you. But here's what I love about Miss April. The name of her business or encounter, we'll get into that, is called Sacred Sisterhood of Sexuality. woo April? Yeah, we're gonna jump right in. Talk Let's to me it. a little bit about what the sis sacred sisterhood of sexuality actually is. Mm. Well, as you can see, I'm in my red tent. So I bring women together or female identified people into the lovely red tent. The red tent is a sacred and safe space for people to talk about what's important to them, namely sexuality, because it's something we don't talk about normally. It's something that's hush hush. And it's something that we repress and oh, can't talk about that and blah, 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 blah. No, 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 not in the red tent. In the red tent, all bets are off. None of those inhibitions are allowed here. We come to talk, we come to learn, we come to grow, we come to explore, we come to really dive into what's in our way of really exploring our sexuality with freedom and ease. Because let me tell you, girl, ecstasy is our birthright. I love... I'm hold on. I'm writing that down. <laughs> Ecstasy is a birthright. <laughs> that Absolutely. is awesome. April, what got you into this? What's your background? I've got a varied background, but I feel like it's kind of all culminated right here, which is perfect. So three different kind of streams. I've been a regulated health professional for over 20 years. So I started as a registered massage therapist. Then I went back to school and became a registered midwife. Now here in Canada and our lovely socialized medicine, it is as fabulous as people say it is. Um, <laughs> you either have a doctor or a midwife for your birth. So it's different than midwifery in the States. So I was a midwife and I loved it. I got to hold space for women as they went through the most amazing transition of their lives into becoming mothers yeah. and um yeah so it was an amazing amazing journey i loved being a midwife unfortunately working in healthcare isn't so healthy for the healthcare providers um so i had to leave because it was not very um it wasn't very healthy um but i loved being a midwife mm -hmm. so there's that part i've been a coach for 15 years so i know how to really work with people to find out what's stopping them get that out of the way to really move forward and take really great action in their life and I've also been exploring my own sacred sexuality for over 20 years. Wow. Hmm. So That's I get crazy. to combine all of those. So I've got like the professional women's health background mm -hmm. and being a midwife, I know all about the anatomy. I know all about the sexual health. I know how to have intimate conversations with people. I know how to coach people to get out of the way, whatever's in their way. And I know a whole bunch and I teach all about sacred sexuality as well. I, I love the name, the sacred sisterhood of sexuality so it's like you said it's mostly women and female identified sure. people is if that you, you identify as a female you are welcome into the red tent i don't okay. Okay. i don't discriminate based on any body parts uh if you are a woman i believe you you come on into the tent <laughs> and in this day and age it is important to make sure that that gets out there so absolutely let me ask you so when you're when you're having these conversations in the red tent mm -hmm. How do you, is there an age group? Is it because, you know, all of us become women, if you will, at a certain time in our life, and it may not be at 15, it may not be at 22. What, what are you looking at age group wise? Legally, it's, you know, adults 18 and above, just mm -hmm. because the laws, et cetera, et cetera. But are we sexual beings before 18? Hell yes, most of mm -hmm. us were sexual before we were 18. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, for legal sake, 18 and above. I find, though, that most of the women who are attracted into the red tent, into the sisterhood, are usually, you know, definitely over 35. It mm -hmm. doesn't mean you can't come if you're under 35, but it's usually women in their 40s, 50s who are like, you know, it's my time. 
Right. You know, I have been taking care of everybody else for so long and it's time for me now. And this is something that is usually taken a back seat after you've had yeah. kids, you're just so focused on the kids and raising them and all of that stuff. And th then, you know, the kids get older, they don't need as much of your time. And then you're like, okay, I need to fill my cup. And sure. sex is usually taken a much back seat. It is, if you even thought about it, right. I have women who come into the tent who have not had sex in over a decade. Wow. I know. You, you know, it's, it sounds crazy, amazing. but people, it's, it, like you said, it is something you don't talk about or mm -hmm. you don't talk about a mixed company or mm -hmm. it's something that I talk about, but I don't know a whole bunch about. Mm -hmm. Or my favorite is we don't talk about it. I don't know about it. And I'm not sure I'm supposed to enjoy it like that. We get so many mixed messages and so much baggage put in our way of really enjoying our sexuality, stuff our parents said, or things they did consciously or unconsciously, things that we learned in school, not much, really not much, right. things that our friends are telling us that who knows if it's real or not. We fumble through as you know, teenagers or first experiences, we're trying to, feel, I don't know what I'm doing, do you know what you're doing? And then of course we all stumble onto porn at some point and mm -hmm. porn is not a good teacher of sexuality porn has its place i'm not a you know no porn person but if you're a young person you think that's what it's supposed to be like that's not what it's supposed to be like right. it's like you wouldn't take i like to say you wouldn't take your parenting advice from the sopranos i know it's dating me but <laughs> <laughs> i like that show by the way <laughs> right <laughs> So don't take your sexuality advice from porn. That's yeah. not, porn is meant for a 98% male audience that is stimulated through their visual cortex. Mm -hmm. So that's how men are stimulated. Great for men, not so great for us ladies who that's mm -hmm. usually not how we're stimulated. Sure. It's not get to the hardcore stuff, fast, go, go, go. Mm -hmm. That's not how our brains and our sexuality works. We need that lovely slow warm up. We need that teasing. We right. need that pleasing. We need that anticipation. We need you some know? time, girl. <laughs> to slowly warm this oven up it's not just boom and we're ready yeah you know? yeah so that it's is so true and, and then what happens is as women we think that porn's what we're supposed to like mm. so we do it like that in the porn because that's what the guys want okay let's do that and then we don't like it then what happens mm -hmm. then we automatically say oh there's something wrong over here Right. So there's something wrong with me. I'm not doing it right. My body's broken because it's not, I'm not having the same results that they do. So clearly mm -hmm. it must be something wrong so with me. It must be me. It's made up. It's not real. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and that is so good and so true because so many people will look at it, whether it's TV, magazine, wherever, whatever. My favorite is romantic companies, romantic comedies, because what happens at the end of the romantic comedy is when it literally just starts, if you will, but yet and still, none of that's real. And like mm -hmm. you said, we look at ourselves then and say, what's wrong with me? And your answer is, girl, there's nothing wrong with there's you. Nothing wrong with you. It's just, we've been educating people about sexuality in such a crazy way because mm -hmm. we've got all this baggage around it. Like we're not supposed to talk about it. Oh, you can't talk to your kids about it. Yeah. Why not? Talk mm -hmm. to them age appropriate, use right. proper body terminology, mm -hmm. tell them it's a beautiful part of being an adult and yeah. consensual between two people who love each other. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Like, and it, it just, it drives me nuts. And when I bring women into the tent, the stuff that they're dealing with is like, yeah. it's real for for them like yeah. it is like there is something wrong with me or wow. they go to their doctor and they say sex is painful mm -hmm. and what advice do they get from their gynecologist is well use some lube and relax yeah but not really so you have a tendency if you will to kind of deal with like some trauma almost That's and right. I'm, I'm not saying you know if you will medical trauma that you probably need to see a licensed professional but a real trauma in in their lives that's blocking them from enjoying this very natural um experience our bodies hold on to the trauma i have had wow. as a midwife i had so many women have trauma released while they're birthing mm -hmm. because those tissues are being stretched bigger than they've ever been stretched before sure. and stuff comes out and mm -hmm. they you know sometimes traumas are relived and you know, sexual trauma happens. Yeah, it happens. It's yeah. way more common than we talk about. And it needs to be dealt with because we're holding it in our bodies. Mm -hmm. So I'm not a therapist. I don't do therapy around it. But I do have you look at what did you make that mean? And how's that stopping you now? Yeah, and let's get that out of the way mm -hmm. so that we can really enjoy it because yeah. ecstasy is our birthright. Like 
Absolutely. I, I wrote it down. Ecstasy yes. <laughs> is a birthright. I'm going to put it someplace. I, I just am. That is just so cool. Because again, it's something it's that we don't talk about or didn't learn about. No. Or, you know, growing up, what do you do? Like you said, which is so funny. We ask all of our friends who don't know crap anyway, but we're going to ask them. <laughs> exactly. If, if you've got that relationship with them. Yeah. So many people like, I, they don't even want to bring it up to their friends because they think they're so broken. Mm. Like, like sometimes in the tent, this is the first time they've had these conversations. Ooh. And I also have people come into the tent who have been exploring their sexuality for a really long time mm. and just want to get out of the way some other cobwebs that may be yes, there. So it's, it's really for everybody, but it's, mm -hmm. it's, um, I'm amazed at what people are coming forward and telling me. And it's like, yeah, wow. because, because like you said, they want it, they need somebody to talk to and they need a safe place to do it. So is that what you're saying? The red tent is, it's your safe place. So yeah. So the, where the red tent came from, there's a book written 20 plus years ago now, I think it's called The Red Tent. And it's the, it's actually a biblical story. It's the story of Dina's rape, but told oh, from wow. her perspective, mm -hmm. as opposed to told from her brother's perspective, I think. I'm sorry, mm -hmm. I don't know my Bible That's, that well. That is her brother, oh. okay, brother but yeah. <laughs> so it's told from her perspective. And they talk about how they're this nomadic culture and mm -hmm. they travel around in their tents. And um, before electricity and before um, hormonal control of our menstrual cycles, women used to menstruate at the same time. So mm -hmm. we would ovulate at the full moon, which is why men go crazy at the full moon because women are <laughs> fertile at that point. Mm -hmm. And we also bleed at the new moon. I mean, it's all over the place now because of electricity, sure. artificial light and yada, yada. Right. However, before all of that, that's how it used to be. And so for the three days of the new moon, they would set up a red tent where the women would go in and bleed together because they couldn't be traveling while they were bleeding. So that was, so it became three days of really being with each other as women right. and mm -hmm. the conversations that they would have and they would talk about sex and they would talk about their partners and it kind of became a symbol of bringing women together in a safe wow. place to really celebrate being women right and so um and so that's kind of goddess circles have kind of come up like this and all sorts mm -hmm. of things and, and when my daughter had her first blood it was mm -hmm. i made it into a big thing we had a first blood ritual for her wow. and we invited all of her women in her world so <laughs> her my mom so mm -hmm. her grandparents her aunts her her cousins wow. her friends her teachers came some of her teachers came oh. and um and we had this beautiful uh ceremony in the red tent mm -hmm. and we asked everybody to bring as many red sheets as they had so we hung them all up on the walls sure. and it was just a beautiful celebration of her becoming a woman mm -hmm. and people brought her gifts of representing what it was like to be a woman mm -hmm. we all shared different stories of our first our first kiss our first time having sex our first mm -hmm. periods like whatever some kind right. of and every woman there came up to me at one point and said, April, this was healing for me. Yeah. Thank you so much. You know, so that's just, so true. You know, you think of those things, you know, for a lot of us that menstruated for the very first time, it could have been traumatic, you know, especially if, you know, it you happened at prepared. school. Yeah. You weren't prepared. <laughs> Your parents didn't talk about it. You didn't know what it was or worse yet. Uh, you know, you had no sisters. There were no other women in your life. So you knew nothing about it. Do you know, it's, it's, it's just so weird. April, I am telling you, this is going to go on forever. I have a question though for you. So okay. now I know that you are in Canada and yes. I know that you do a lot of live events there. What about virtual clientele? Because I can only imagine that I have some folks watching that are going to love to want to talk to you. So I do everything virtual now. In yeah. time of COVID, we have to do virtual, right? Mm -hmm. So um, I actually, when we bring people into the red tent, I give them a Zoom background that looks like okay. a red tent. Oh, so when they come into Zoom, we all have our red tents in the background. So it feels okay. like we're all together, which is That's really good. Great. That's so yeah, good. it's all virtual. Um, so I do it all virtual. Uh, I have a six-week course called Into the Red Tent. Oh, it's kind of my nice. flagship course, and that's mm -hmm. where we start. And I take them through a seven-step process mm -hmm. to look at all of the baggage that's in our way and to get it out of the way so that they can create a whole new paradigm around their sexuality wow. so they can enjoy it with fun and ease and pleasure and ecstasy and bliss and you name it. I so, know because ecstasy is my birthright. I'm just yes. saying. <laughs> just putting that out there. Hey, you guys, look, I know this conversation is amazing and you're getting as much out of it as I am. And if you want to get in touch with April, don't worry. All of her information is going to be in the description. Don't forget, if you haven't already, subscribe to our YouTube channel, give us a thumbs up and also leave a comment. April, before I let you go, my friend. I'm excited. You have, you have 
Oh, should I be nervous? I feel like I should be nervous. For this. Now you know all the answers. Look, the game is called This or That, and it's pretty simple. I'm going to give you the choice of two things, and you, off the top of your head, just tell me which one you like the best. You ready okay. to play? Let's go. Let's do it. or iPhone? iPhone. Read the book or see the movie? Read the book. Wow. Wallflower or Life of the Party? Life of the Party! Yay! Yes, I'm sure. Summertime fun or winter wonderland? Ooh, probably summertime fun. Me too. Eat to live or live to eat? Live to eat. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Out in nature or stuck in, stuck in the house? Oh, get me out in nature, baby. Yeah. Coke mm. or Pepsi? Coke. Mm. Drive the car or ride? Uh, either. Yeah? Yeah, okay. I'm, I'm good. I like driving and I like being passengers, so I'm not, okay. not going to commit. There you Sorry, go. Sorry, darling. <laughs> I like sports or I don't care? Okay. Okay. When you were younger, April, what was your first job? <laughs> Ah, I had two actually. The first one was Taco Bell, but then I worked at an amusement park here called Canada's Wonderland. And uh, I worked in Hanna-Barbera land and I got to do the games. So I got to do the lucky ducky pull. And I also did the age and weight game and I was really good at it. So they put me on that game all the time. So I guess people's ages and weights. Oh, hilarious. I got to know, is there a trick to that game? Because I, I don't see how they do it. Well, the trick is we win either way. So, you know, the $2, the $2 gift is like worth 25 cents and the $5 gift is worth 75 cents. So it doesn't really matter. So the house always wins. April, thank you wins. so much for joining us. I totally appreciate you. Thank you so much for being here. This has been so much fun. You're such fun. a hoot, Ricky. Thank you. All right, everybody. That's it for us this time, but we'll see you next time on extra.